Hollywood Hampton Roads. A look behind the lens at the work of local filmmakers. From Hollywood to Hampton Roads. With your host, Jeff Frizzell and Hunter Thomas. Hollywood Hampton Roads is brought to you by Rice Reyes Advertising and the Hampton Roads Film Office. Welcome to Hollywood Hampton Roads. I thought you were saying it at the same time. I thought, time. well, well, we can't seem to agree on who's going to intro this thing. So welcome. Well, See, well, look, I you just, just, all right, we, we've worked this out. You're going to start, and then I'm going to go, right? Okay. Welcome well, to Hollywood. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Body language closed. That's fine. Go ahead. No, we're going to start our show right now. Welcome to Hollywood Hampton Roads. I'm Jeff Frizzell, Commissioner of the Hampton Roads Film Office. My co-host is Hunter Thomas, who is the Chapter Chair of the Virginia Production Alliance Hampton Roads, and also a local producer and director. Thank you. See, that was very nice. We're getting the hang of this now. Um, Jeff has really come up with a cool idea for a show. Hollywood Hampton Roads is we're going to feature local filmmakers, Hampton Roads filmmakers, of which there are a lot that you might not even know about. There are a lot. There's been a lot of big film shot in Hampton Roads, Mission Impossible mm -hmm. 3, uh, Navy SEALs, Virus, part of the John Adams miniseries, which Emmy Award winner Jay Mahar is a local Hampton oh, Roads yeah. resident for sound. That's right. Um, but there's a lot of independent film done in Hampton Roads. Hampton Roads was named in 2007 in Movie Maker Magazine as one of the best places in the country to live, mm -hmm. work, and make independent films. Up and films. coming. Yeah. And we're, yeah, we're here now. So we like this concept. We'll be bringing in local filmmakers to talk about their projects, uh, see some clips. Tell them about the, like the, the format of the show, because I think we've worked really hard on that. I do, too. So each show will have two guests. Uh, they will... Filmmakers, of course. Filmmakers, of mm -hmm. course. And again, we'll talk about their projects, right. as I was saying before you interrupted. Oh, sorry. And we will see some clips of the stuff they're working on, talk about stuff that's happening, talk about future projects. And then we have... A little news bit, three minutes with Jay. With and we'll also Jay take Gates. some emails and some tweets from people, too. So it's contemporary in that medium way. You know what I mean? The show will be on three times a week. Yeah. The initial shows will be shown Sunday at 8 o'clock with repeats, encore presentations, if you would, mm -hmm. on Fridays at 5.30 p.m., Saturdays at 5. All here on Cox, Cox Channel 11. 11. Oh, but I have something else to say. Tonight's premiere episode is going to be a little different because our first guest, David O'Donnell, who is the uh, writer and producer of Desperate Escape, is our first guest. But our host, Jeff, is also the producer of Desperate Escape. So we have kind of a little bit of a different style for our premiere episode of Hollywood Hampton Roads. Okay, all right. So David O'Donnell, Cat Moon, and... Three minutes with Jay. Three minutes And emails. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so when we come back... We will meet with We're actually going to go right to the news. No, we're going to go right to the news when we come back. Right to the news. <sighs> right to the news. Mm -hmm. Three and minutes David with Don. Jay.
that was quick. Welcome to 3 Minutes with Jay. I am your host, Jay Gates. And if you know me, you know that 3 Minutes is pretty much all I'm good for. Uh, this part of the program, I'm going to be giving you the latest breaking Hollywood news and how it relates to the Hampton Roads film community. Also, taking you behind the scenes on some projects that are filming uh, in the area and uh, letting you, you know, get familiar with some of your local celebrities and the unsung heroes behind the camera making it all happen. And what a great way to start this program. We had the 48-hour film project recently roll through town. 28 local teams competed in this thing. Each team was given a character, a line of dialogue, a prop, and a genre in 48 hours to make a short film. So uh, I caught up with them at the Narrow, uh, and let's see how it all turned out. Uh, I was set photographer and assistant group. I was key grip. What does a grip actually do? Uh, everything. <laughs> Whatever you want me to. Somebody's full of themselves. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's, I know. We got the Price is Right microphone out here. I don't know why. It's weird. So, what kind of movie did you make? I didn't make the movie. He's the director, Scott Hansen. Cool. All right. What was the What was the title of your movie? Excellent. So, uh, I I take it you probably acted or? Not in this film. Oh. I like your eyes. You have very pretty eyes. Thank you. Nice. So, uh, again, your movie. Um, what genre is it? Again, it was in my film. Scott Hansen, the director, he's right here next to me. Sweet. That's excellent. So, you think it has a good shot at at winning? Sure. I, it was directed by Scott Hansen. I really do think so. But again, I didn't direct the film. He did. Nice, nice. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you just get here? Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna see what your genre was in the title of your film, and uh, from that, I'm gonna try to guess what uh, your movie's about. So, go ahead and give it to me. All right. The uh, the genre was heist. The title of it is 36. 36. Stop. It's an arbitrary number. And it's heist. All right. Uh, I'm gonna imagine uh, your movie probably centers uh, around a uh, a 36-year-old man who is uh, trying to steal back his youth um, by dating an 18-year-old because it's half his age and um, probably doesn't work out. There's a lot of. Uh, am I close at all? Uh, you're way off. We drew the buddy film genre, and our title is Hard Milk. Hard Milk. Okay. I'm gonna say your movie is about. A recent college grad who is picked up for work uh, on his first day at a job by a stringent uh, veteran cheese salesman, and hilarity just ensues. That's that's exactly what it's about. Are you serious? Get out of my head! Welcome back to Hollywood Hampton Roads. Our first guest tonight, David O'Donnell, mm -hmm. vice president in charge of development for New Dominion Pictures, and he was the writer and producer on a film we're going to talk about tonight, which is Desperate Escape. Desperate Escape. Hi, David. Hello. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Hope you're enjoying the show so, so far. So far, it's been brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that's how we roll here. Very funny banter. So yeah. Tell us a little bit about you know how this whole thing got started, Desperate Escape. Well, uh, as you recall, as I did. <laughs> Jeff and Ray Brown, the director, and I uh, worked out a time for together at uh, New Dominion Pictures and had always talked about doing a movie. Ray said he had this idea. It was a movie that could be shot largely around his ha house, which borders the Dismal Swamp. I think you said, okay, you've got till Monday to give me an outline. I did. Yeah. And then Ray wrote this outline. You gave it to me on Monday, and you said, okay, you have to write the script. That's because you make things happen. That's what I do. We even have a statue where it says, Jeff makes things happen. That's what he does. But that, it does that say... in the movie, by the way. Is it really? One mm -hmm. of the characters is loosely based on Jeff. Oh, that's terrific. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's kind of a jerk, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he said he, it right he's, here. He's, so it's a forest he's not the antagonist, but you would think he was. <laughs> right. So anyway. Well, I, I, wanna, I have a question, though. Can we, uh, can we get right to... Because the little statue says dismal. So I know we're, there's been uh, name change, right? So how does that happen in the movie world? What, I mean, what happened? It was originally called Dismal. It was always Dismal. Uh, we shot it as Dismal. Um, and then we found out, actually after we shot it, that there was another film being shot called Dismal mm. because uh, they had a website up and somebody saw it and told us. And, uh, they had a and website up, yeah. like Blair Witch, like it was, so it was real. It was also <laughs> set in the Dismal Swamp, and it was shot in the Dismal Swamp, but on the North Carolina side. Really? Yes. Yeah. 
And I actually called them and told them to change the name, and they said, shove off. They, I don't think they said, Pfft. I think they might have So said. they yeah. shot after us, but they were distributed. They shot after you? Like <laughs> domestically before us through the same company. Oh. So the company said we have to change our name because we already have a dismal. Because we're the other dismal. The other dismal. Yeah. So now we are Desperate Escape, and nobody should confuse that. Watch and rent Ever. and buy Desperate Escape, not Dismal. Although Dismal might be a good movie, too. Might yeah, be. Dismal. Yep. But Dismal's a suspense thriller. It happened as it Dismal looks. See, I said it. His <gasps> Dismal, his Dismal's, a, their Dismal's a horror it's film. It's a horror film. Yeah. The other one. Ours is a suspense thriller, Desperate Escape. So tell me about it, though. It did, now, do you still have Stick to the Trail? Yes. Uh, that's yes. still a tagline. It's All right. You know what? We are getting the finger. So, so when we come back, we'll look at a clip. That's a great Actually idea. Actually, a trailer. I love that. That's a fantastic idea. Are we going to camp in assigned spots? No, we're bushwhacking. If you're not too scared. A lot of people say there's some serious swamp magic out there. Say, you never really leave the swamp. Part of you always stays forever. Don't worry, they're fine. As long as Matt's there, your man's safe. Will you just tell me what you want and I will make it happen. I need you gone. Come on, Eddie! Come on! Sure, we're going the right way, Matt. Wow, that that looks like something I'm gonna enjoy. It looks yeah. kind of, it's creepy, you know. It is creepy. You will enjoy it. It's, yeah, it's a suspense thriller. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, well, give us a synopsis. It's about these two guys, they're brothers-in-law. They go to the Dismal Swamp on a fishing trip, although one of the brothers has ulterior motives We're not, that aren't sh clear. They find themselves in the territory of this escaped uh, killer who's out <laughs> there. He tries to get them away. Did you say, ugh? 
It's creepy. Okay, it's I funny. mean, the trailer looked creepy. It's creepy. Like, well, you, you saw the guy, and he's trying to lure them away because he doesn't want anybody to mess with him, but they miss all his warnings. They end up getting too close, and he descends, and it, it turns into kind of a psychological and Ooh. physical thriller. I love psychological thrillers. And actually, the star of the film is a local actor, yeah. William Gregory Lee, who now lives in L.A., but was born and raised here in Virginia Beach. His mom still lives here. and He's on Dark Angel and Xena and well, the one thing Dante's I Cove. Remember, uh, what, what did you say? He was on Dante's, Dante's Cove. Cove. It's oh, okay. kind of a cable series that's kind of out guy, there. I don't know if you can see him, but he, the older guy, the, the bad guy. Richard Reilly. the guy Batty. from Office Space who, who invented the uh, oh. Jump, Jump to Conclusions, conclusions game. Sweet. Yeah, 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 he's awesome. Richard has been well, in a ton of stuff. Very this different. Is, but wait, I wanna, this is what I want to say about Desperate Escape. One, I remember when you guys were shooting this, and I remember that it employed a ton of people, right? 100% local crew. 100% local crew, and shot locally, which is really what we strive for very much. What were some of the challenges you felt with that? Uh, well, I mean, it was a challenge shooting in the swamp in the summer. It was mm. hot. Um, yeah, because it, it was July, 95 degree, 95 percent humidity every day. But I didn't really feel like it was a challenge putting together a, a crew locally because there's so many awesome technicians yeah. here and, and actors and everybody. It was. Yeah, in fact, we only brought in. I mean, the one guy that was a star, we did bring in from LA, but he was born and raised here, and we brought in a guy semi-local from North Carolina, and then the one other guy from LA, and I think we had probably 25, 30 actors, and the rest are all local. So everyone got to go home and. Pick the chiggers Pick off. Pick the chiggers body. off. <laughs> yeah, the ticks and home. the mosquito bites <laughs> and all the other things that we encountered yeah. in the swamp. Tell me one of the craziest things. You know what I keep thinking? Did anyone get bitten by a snake or any... No animals or humans were harmed in the making of this film. No, there was a water moccasin that was in a, a water area that, that Greg had to fall into, but we waited mm. for the moccasin to move on. Did he get hazard pay for that? He didn't, and, and we, we, had a, we had figured out a way not to have him fall in. And he's such a trooper, he said, no, I'll do it. And he went in the swamp. There you go. And it was pretty. And, and it was what? gross. It was grody. Oh. That's what I said. That's, That's true. That's the professional term, actually. Yeah. And what do you think uh, will come of all this? Uh, I'd like to get our investors' money back. I hope that will. And it, I think it's going to be exciting for the crew to finally see it. We shot it three summers ago. Yes. And they worked really hard on it, and uh, it, it took some time to get distributed, so it's finally coming out. I think it's going to be great. Sweet. We wish you all the best. Thanks. I can't wait to see it. Hunter, Kelly writes, how do I break into show business? Oh, Kelly, be prepared to work your butt off. I think you'll really enjoy it once you get in, but be prepared to work really hard. Oh, hey, Billy asks, have you guys ever done this before? Billy. We have done this plenty of times. We are professionals in the film industry. No, hey, for hey, here's years. another one. Mike asks, I hear all those terms like gaffer and best boy and key grip. What does all that mean? Well, all those terms have been around for a long time. Key grip, that means like Oh, hey! We're getting a tweet. Oh, it's Oh, it's from Zanny. <laughs> um, she says we need to wrap this segment up. <laughs> well, upcoming is our next guest, Kat Moon. She is a documentary filmmaker, and she is here to talk about a future project and also her latest project, Crab Beast or Famine. It's a story about Virginia's watermen and the decline of the blue crab in the Chesapeake Bay. Looking forward to that. See you when we get back.
I've lived on the Chesapeake Bay all my life. It's my home. For 400 years, my ancestors have crabbed and fished in the bay. We have a proud tradition and we work hard. So much has changed from when I was a boy at fishing with my dad. The oysters are nearly gone and crabs are at an all time low. The fact is, the crab catch in the Chesapeake Bay has dropped over 70% in the last 10 years. Did you know that in certain times of the year, up to 60% of the Chesapeake Bay is a dead zone where nothing can live? This used to be a sustainable fishery. With all the money being spent on the bay, where is it all going? Some of the boys don't know if they'll make it till next year or not. When you look at it on the Chesapeake Bay, it's a beautiful view. But when you get down into water two or three feet, that's a different story. Well, welcome to Hollywood Hampton Roads, Kat. Thank you. That was that, that project looked uh, pretty intense. I know that uh, I grew up on the York River, so I, I know a little bit about crab eating and, and the watermen. So tell us what it was like to work with them. Um, I love working with watermen. It, it wasn't easy at first because the watermen haven't had their story told. Um, it's more like the scientists were telling the story and the politician and, and it seemed to be slanted and they needed somebody that could step in and, and tell their story and tell the whole story of what's going on in the Chesapeake Bay. And so these are mostly guys from Virginia, you did most of this in Virginia? Uh, most of it's in Virginia and on and Tanger Island. Um, That's a whole other world. Tanger I know. Island. Did you have trouble understanding it? Did you need a translator? <laughs> well, I ended up talking like them towards the end. <laughs> you know, they tried to do that movie with um, uh, Kevin Costner and Paul Newman there. Uh, yeah, message they in a bottle, like and they said, they no know. way, we don't want Hollywood, we like our island. Tanger Island? Yeah. Holy cow. Which is, I think, a testament to you and your documentary filmmaking that you did get on the island and get those people to trust you and um, get them to express themselves. Well, I, I guess I'm a country girl and I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you know, we made a lot of wonderful friends. And, and you know, I just really feel passionate. I want to um, put the message out there that the Chesapeake Bay is a beautiful place, but it, it's you know, it's polluted and, you know, it's dirty and if we don't take care of it, we're not going to have it for future generations. We're not going to have the blue crab that we love. We're not going to have all the other things that we love about the bay. And, and the watermen have become basically a poster child for cleaning up the bay. I actually think they had Save the Bay Day uh, back in the early part of June this year. I think they have that every year. I think they said they pull out like 80,000 pounds of garbage or something. It's just crazy. What made you decide to do that? You know, what, what got your passion towards the bay and the watermen? A lot of people ask me that. I think I started out, I, I must have been about 12 years old. My family came here because we grew up in the you know, mountains, Shenandoah Valley, and I saw the ocean and I went, oh, wow. And, <laughs> you know, and it seemed like crab, you, you can't afford to get crab anymore. We would just come down here and get crab and we couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I saw something about the decline of the crab, and I wanted to know why. And then I thought it was going to be a little piece about crabs, and it turned into a bigger piece about people, that um, because they kept imposing, they keep imposing stricter regulations on the watermen, instead of actually addressing the real issue about the water, you know, about the the water quality, and and so that's what brought me to the to the watermen is is just to see that there's watermen that are, that are being put out of business. This is an industry that's being put out of business because of the hard regulations and, and the bigger issue of water quality is not being addressed. Well, be before we started, um, you mentioned you had another project coming up that you're working on. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I have been invited to go to Tanzania to work with uh, a women and the Maasai women. And the, fo the, one of their, the focal point is educating girl, ch children, women, um, because um, and, and to many of their women, they're cattle people, and they are um, um, the women are married very young, and they don't have an education, and they don't have possibilities. And educating the women is a way to um, uh, develop their country. But the, the other side is it brings development and it changes their culture. So um, my film is, is about bringing awareness about, about their, their society and, and the, the, the challenges they're facing with developing their culture. Um, but, you know, the, it's the good and the bad. It's just following their life. And so this is more in keeping with 
what you've said, that you want to give a voice to people that don't have it. You want to do that through filmmaking. Well, I, I loved what Stephen Kurzawa uh, said. He's the um, Maasai elder. He, he left me an email. I was so touched. He said, Kat, I want you to speak for my people so my people will speak for themselves. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Well, good luck on that project. And, you know, I know it's tough as a documentary filmmaker to find funding and get everything you need done for these things. So, um, you know, good luck with that. So, in the meantime, you can catch Kat's documentary, Crab Feast or Famine. It'll be um, aired on a Virginia PBS station, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for coming. Thank well, you. Good luck. All right. Thanks. Well, that's about all the time we have here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget Encore Presentations, Friday 5.30 p.m., Saturday 5 o'clock, Cox Channel 11, and stay tuned for our next Hollywood Hampton Roads. Hollywood Hampton Roads. <laughs>